Prostate cancer was first described by anatomist Nicola Massa back in 1536, but it was another three centuries before this deadly disease was formally identified. The 1890s saw the first attempts to treat prostate cancer by orchidectomy, but success was very limited. Becquerel's breakthrough discovery of radioactivity in 1896 led swiftly onto the use of intraprostatic radium implants, but benefits again proved to be minor. Surgical removal of the prostate gland itself was attempted in 1904. Then external beam radiation became available, as stronger radiation sources were identified. It was in 1941 that Charles Huggins successfully used oestrogen to oppose testosterone production in metastatic prostate cancer. This was the first use of chemical castration and was later to win a Nobel Prize. Then in 1945, Terence Millin developed radical retropubic prostatectomy involving the removal of the prostate through an abdominal incision, but the penalty was a loss of sexual function. In 1960, Reuben Phlox was the first to identify antigens specific to the prostate in addition to those specific to humans. And in 1970, Richard Ablin was the first to discover prostate-specific antigen. The following year, Andrew Shalley found that luteinizing hormone-releasing hormone, or LHRH agonists, could turn off testicular testosterone production. It was during this decade that systemic chemotherapy for prostate cancer was first investigated, with regimens including cyclophosphamide and 5-fluorouracil. At the beginning of the 1980s, Lawrence Papsidero used an antibody against PSA in prostatic tissue to identify PSA in serum. This was the first use of a diagnostic test for prostate cancer. Studies in 1982 demonstrated the clinical effectiveness of treatment with LHRH agonists, which reversibly counteract testosterone production. The following year, Patrick Walsh refined the retropubic prostatectomy, allowing removal of the prostate whilst maintaining sexual function. 1987 was the year of Thomas Stamey's landmark study. He demonstrated that levels of circulating PSA correlated with the advancing stage of prostate cancer and were proportional to the estimated tumour volume. Advancing into the 90s, a watch and wait approach was introduced for men with early stage prostate cancer, consisting of frequent examinations and PSA testing, which allowed patients most likely to benefit from treatment to be identified. In addition, laparoscopic prostatectomy techniques were developed, which reduced surgical side effects and shortened recovery time. Chemotherapy options improved in 2004, when the FDA approved docetaxel for the treatment of metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer after clinical trials demonstrated improved survival. Docetaxel is the current standard of care in this setting, and recent results presented on capacitaxel in 2010 have added to this state-of-the-art field of chemotherapy. Since 1970, progress in diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer has improved age-standardized five-year survival rates. But importantly, diagnostic improvements and an aging population have caused incidence rates across Europe to soar. Today, androgen deprivation therapy is used to treat prostate cancer, either through surgical or medical castration, which includes the use of LHRH analogues and antiandrogens. Hormonal therapy remains key but after an initial response, most patients will progress to a castration-resistant phase where treatment options are limited. Current research efforts are focused on additional treatment options and new therapeutic strategies, such as androgen biosynthesis inhibition for men with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. During 2010 and 2011, important new treatment options have become available with the FDA approval of Cipular Cell T and the FDA and EMA approvals of Cabazitaxel, Denosumab and Abiraturan. And now, it's time to look to the future.